Hey guys, and welcome to the third KV uh, tutorial. So in today's video, what we're going to be doing is talking about how we can add a button into our layout, how we can add some functionality for that button. So like when you click the button, maybe it gets the name and the last name and the email. Maybe it checks the email is valid. Uh, we'll be messing around with some of that stuff. And then in the next video, what we're going to be doing is talking about the KV language. So making .kv files so that we can kind of simplify all of this creation of widgets and all this, which is not necessary, but uh, it makes our life a lot easier when we can figure out how to do that. So essentially, let's get started with adding this button. So the way we can do that uh, is by simply just we got to import button, first of all. So we'll say kivi.uix.button uh, import button. And if, any, if you guys are curious about a lot of the, the parameters, for example, like this is not the only text input parameter, you can go on the Kivi documentation, which I'll leave in the description and on my website, techwithtim.net, and it will show you uh, all the different parameters and things you can mess around with. For example, a label, you could change the font size, you can change the color. Uh, there's a lot of other stuff, which I will be talking about in future videos. But for now, if you're curious and the next video is not out, you can look at that. Okay, so what we're going to do here to add a button. Okay, so a button uh, is pretty straightforward. What I'm going to do is say self dot, uh, let's say submit, standing for that button is going to be equal to a button. And then on our button, what we're going to do is going to say text equals, uh, and then we'll just say submit. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change the font size as well. So font size equals, let's play with uh, 40 and see if that's too big or not. Okay, so we've created a button. Now, when we click this button, or actually first we can add it to the window and I'll show you what it looks like and then we can talk about some challenges we might have. So self.add widget, uh, self.submit. Uh, let's just run this quickly and I've just changed this column back to two as opposed to three or six or whatever it was before. You can see we get this submit button, but when I click it, uh, nothing's really happening. Now it's great that it kind of fills this whole square, um, but maybe we want it to be in the middle. So how would we go about adding this to the middle? So let's do that first. Uh, so to add this to the middle is actually a bit more complex than you might think. Now in other kind of uh, GUIs, you can do something called column span, which means I could say that this spans two columns and it would be the entire bottom. Now the issue with that here is that we can't do that. So what we actually need to do if we want it to be centered is we need to um, <laughs> do something that's a bit more complex. Now what that is, is we need to create another grid layout inside of this grid layout and then add it to the other grid layout. So essentially, um, it's kind of hard to explain. Maybe I'll do a little drawing here quickly. Uh, just delete all that. So if we have like this, and this is our main grid layout, right? And maybe we have one column uh, and two rows. So it looks something like this, okay? One column, two rows. Now what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to add another grid layout that goes in here that would be like, let's say for example, two rows and two columns. So maybe we do something like this and this. So now this is a grid layout inside of this other grid layout. And then we can just add our button down here, which will span the entire bottom like that. So we're gonna have a layout inside of another layout. And it's actually good to show you uh, because you're gonna have to do this quite a bit. Okay, so let's clear that and let's actually worry about how we would do that. So essentially, since we want this button to span the whole bottom, it's going to be in the main grid layout. And then all this stuff that we've already created has to be in the other layout. So let's start by actually just creating another layout. So we're going to say self dot uh, inside. And this is going to be equal to grid layout because it's going to be a new grid layout, right? Okay. And what we're going to do is now we're going to say self dot uh, inside dot calls equals two. Okay. And now what all we're going to do is just replace all of these add widgets. So we're going to do self dot inside dot add widget. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add um, at the very end, all of these are this entire grid layout into the main grid layout. And you'll see what I mean in a second. So self dot inside dot add widget. So wherever you see add widget, you just just add this dot inside. And we'll do this again dot inside dot inside and this is not the most efficient way to go about things but that's what we're going to do and then here we can leave this as add widget because of what we're going to do now okay so now what we have is essentially we have a new grid layout that contains all of this okay so it contains our um what do you call it our last name email first name and then the text fields that go with that now currently that is not on our main layout so when we're returning my grid here in build, we wouldn't actually see this right now because all of this stuff is a part of inside. It's not actually a part of this class. So the way we have to do that is we have to add it to uh, this, this class. So to do that, we'll say self dot 
add widget. And when we add widget, we're going to add this entire layout. So we're going to add inside. So to do that, we'll say self dot inside. And there's one more thing we have to do is we have to actually configure the amount of columns for our main class because now we changed self dot inside dot calls to be equal to two. But for our main layout, we're going to need it to be equal to one, right? So we'll say self dot calls equals one. And now actually, we don't have to do anything else with button because remember, we're just going to add button to the main layout. So now if we run this, it should actually be working. And there we go. So we have first name, last name, email and submit. Now this might be a big, a bit large for us and we can actually change the size and we'll do that in the next video. But you can see this is now how we can kind of add multiple layouts into one. So we'll have hello. Uh, we can like type some stuff like yes, we can do an at, at Gmail, right? We can click submit. Okay, so now let's get into actually messing with this button and what happens when we click that submit button. So what I want to do actually is I need to bind a function to the uh, an event. Now when this button is pressed, I want a function to be called. So let's first actually create the function that's going to be called when we press that button. So I'm going to say define uh, pressed. Okay, and this needs to just take one parameter uh, instance. Okay. And I'll talk about why we need that in a second. And in here, we're just going to print pressed, right? Like that. Now, what I need to do is I got to go back to where I created my button and I need to bind this button to this function pressed so that when we press it, it calls this function. So let's say self dot submit dot bind uh, like this. I believe that's how you do it. I might have to have a look here dot bind. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say on underscore press equals and then pressed like this. Okay, and we're actually gonna need to do self dot press because again, this is a method uh, of, of our class. Okay, so now what should happen if I didn't make a mistake and I may have uh, is we're gonna have whenever we press this button, it prints pressed out to the screen. So let's try this and see if it's working. So if I click submit, you can see that now it prints pressed down here in the console, and I can click it as many times as I want. And you can see it continues to do that. So that's great, but there's a few things that I want to do inside of this. So I probably want to grab the text of the name, the last name, the email, and maybe clear that text out, uh, grab it, store it, do something with it. So let's show how we can do that. So let's, uh, let's just set up a few variables here. So I'm going to say name is equal to, and the way that we actually grab the text from one of our text inputs here is we just say self dot name, because that's the name of our text input dot text. And this is how we can actually access the text from whatever they typed in name, right? So it's name. So we'll say last, uh, just name for last name. It's gonna be self dot last name dot text. And we'll say email equals, and if I spelled email correctly, um, equals self dot email dot text. And that's again how we get all the text from our different text input like attributes. Okay. So we have all those now. So what we can start by doing is just printing all these things out. So I'm just do a, actually, let's just do it like this. We'll just say name and then we'll comma name like this. Don't know what I'm doing here. Name and then we'll do last name and we'll just display all these things so that we can see nice and easy what everything is. So now we'll do email and email like that. Okay, sweet. So let's run this and let's try it now. So if I type in my name, Tim, and let's say tech, and then we'll do Tim at techwithtim.net, which is actually my email, and I click submit, you can see it says the name is Tim, the last name is tech, and the email is uh, Tim at techwithtim.net. And now that we have this information, we can do essentially whatever we want with it, right? And I'll show you actually, so once we print this out, how we can clear these box or how we can clear the text out of those boxes. Cause usually when you click submit, you want to clear everything out uh, so they could like re-input or do something, right? So the way we can do that is the exact same kind of way we're doing this. So we'll just copy this here, say self.name.text equals, and then here we'll say, uh, let's just like a blank string, right? Yeah, okay, I don't know why I was blanking on that, but we'll do that blank string. This one is gonna be a blank string as well. And self.email.text is going to be a blank string as well. So let's run this and let's see if we get it to work. So let's just type something in here. If I click submit, you can see that it clears that and it shows me what I typed there. Great. So now we know how to grab information, how to clear things, how we can bind buttons, how to kind of mess with different layouts. So I think I'm going to end the video here. In the next video, we'll be talking about the Kivi language, which is going to allow us to style things a lot easier and a lot nicer. And then again, we're going to get into some more logic stuff. 
Um, and yeah, so if you guys are enjoying the video, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe. And I will see you again in the next one.